donate your stimulus money. Our top political priority over the next two years should be to deny President Obama a second term. Two Corinthians, right? Two Corinthians, 317. That's the whole ballgame. All of us in America are aware of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which is now in its third week and has resulted in the loss of more than 600 lives and the tremendous destruction of property. We are aware that there has been displacement of over two and a half million of Ukraine's more than 41 million citizens. And we are aware because network and cable news outlets have exhausted themselves in reporting on the conflict. Of course, it's major news. It touches on the three major nuclear powers of the world, the United States, Russia, and China. It is major news because of our alliance with NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, which is comprised of 28 European and two North American countries, the United States and Canada, and the dreaded military response should a NATO member be attacked. It's major news because of the fears that many of us have that Russia's aggression may lead us into a third world war. But Russia's attack on Ukraine is not the only current global conflict. Would you be surprised to know that there are some 59 military conflicts currently taking place in the world? It appears that they are classified by the number of deaths resulted. Skirmishes or clashes, there have been 15 of these, are those that result in 100 or fewer deaths. Some of these have taken place in Egypt, Tunisia, Senegal, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Morocco, and Angola. Minor conflicts, there have been 21 of these, result in between 100 and 1,000 deaths. Some of these have taken place in Ethiopia, Nigeria, Cameroon, Libya, and Chad. Wars, which result in up to 10,000 deaths annually, are currently being fought in Kenya, Somalia, Uganda, Burkina Faso, Togo, Benin, Algeria, Mali, and the Ivory Coast. And major wars, which result in more than 10,000 deaths annually, are being fought in Eritrea and Sudan. All of these nations listed are African nations. All of these conflicts are current, and none of them warrant mention on broadcast or cable news outlets in America. Yet nightly, we are informed about the tragedy that is taking place in Ukraine. Because there is a lack of media coverage, there is a lack of pressure for change. This has serious implications for millions of people. Take Sudan. The war there has plagued this nation for 11 years, but any coverage of it has disappeared from the media despite affecting huge numbers and displacing 2.4 million people in Darfur. Neighboring South Sudan is also an overlooked crisis that urgently needs attention, said Jean-Marie Guheno, president of Brussels-based think tank International Crisis Group, in an interview with Reuters. The horrific violence you still see in South Sudan is because there's no pressure from public opinion. Nigeria is another country where underreporting of internal conflicts is very serious. Since the 2009 Boko Haram Islamist insurgencies, there have been 358,000 deaths, 8,000 last year and more than 1,300 thus far in 2022, almost the same number of lives lost in Ukraine. So why are these other conflicts so underreported? Researchers say it is not necessarily the size of the conflict that attracts greater media attention. Virgil Hawkins, associate professor at the Osaka School of International Public Policy at Osaka University in Japan, said the real reasons for the differences in the coverage are less related to what atrocities were perpetrated and more related to where and against who the atrocities were perpetrated. Hmm. According to three-year-old data regarding Cameroon, Simon Tisdall of The Guardian newspaper writes, 780,000 children are out of school. Hundreds of villages have been burned down. Tens of thousands of people are hiding in the bush with no humanitarian support, and attacks are taking place every day. Both the government and separatists are accused of horrific human rights violations. But there is no outcry within our nation's government, nor is there any pressure brought to bear by international media. Why is there such underreporting of these conflicts in African nations? Oslo, Norway's Peace Research Institute offers this. 
External diplomatic mediation and third-party peace efforts are declining even as the total number of conflicts rise. The Western world has long fixated on the Israel-Palestine peace process, but by contrast, no comparable commitment is seen in Somalia, ravaged by decades of conflict. Hmm. The Institute adds, aggravating this neglect are inadequate, under fire Western foreign aid and assistance budgets. United Nations humanitarian appeals are routinely underfunded. Aid can become a political football. Meanwhile, environmental degradation linked to the climate crisis is increasing poverty and inequality, helping to drive conflict. The International Crisis Group, an independent organization working to prevent wars and shape policies to maintain peace, reported the following. Rising tensions from multiple causes in Benin, Togo, and Sri Lanka all need to be carefully watched. In one sense, it's an impossible task. In another sense, greater focus on conflict prevention and resolution is in everyone's best interest. The scale of the challenge merely underscores an inescapable 21st century reality. Rather than question the multilateralist approaches, the international community needs to work together more closely than ever if collectively it hopes to survive. Caesar Augusto Imba Abogo is the former finance minister of Equatorial Guinea and current country head for the AFDB in Mozambique. He wrote an op-ed last week in which he related a conversation with an unnamed journalist regarding the contrast in coverage of the Ukraine outbreak and the lack of coverage for African nation conflicts. In part, he writes, the racist coverage of the Ukrainian war by some media and some journalists, too many to be ignored, forces us to take a stand and to be indignant at the same time. The media and journalists who have so outraged us, even if they wanted to, they cannot control their racism. That framing of the mind is more than four centuries old. I'm convinced that none of the journalists we have seen say in private to themselves that they are racist, but many of them are. The fact is irrefutable. Not even a mind devoid of light would argue that the world we inhabit and which inhabits us is not inextricably linked to racism. Some infamous media and infamous journalists have reminded us once again these days that they are immune to our pain. Our shame is that we were so surprised. And this is where the framing effect comes in. Several media and journalists who have outraged us, consciously or unconsciously, have a framing. And that frame can, in many respects, be racist, sexist, and whatever else you want to add. We have a responsibility to free our minds from this framing. The great obstacle to the realization of our potential is this psychological framework. My recommendation? Let us take seriously the words spoken by Bob Marley more than four decades ago. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our mind. We're sensitive to the pain of all who suffer the consequences of war. For the people of Ukraine, but also for the people of Somalia and South Sudan and Uganda and Nigeria and Kenya and Cameroon and the Ivory Coast and the many other nations of black and brown people whose suffering goes unnoticed and ignored. Let us pray for greater sensitivity to the needs of all these people. Lord God, we grieve for the people of Ukraine. We know that their suffering is great and totally unnecessary but we also grieve for the people who suffer in other parts of the world, the horrors of war. We grieve for the people of Myanmar and Yemen and Saudi Arabia and Ethiopia and Eritrea and Sudan and Somalia and Kenya and Pakistan and Peru. For people who are afflicted by war in every corner of the globe, and we ask at the same, that the same attention and outrage and concern that is being shown to the people of Ukraine would also be shown to the millions of others for whom war is a daily occurrence. We grieve for children who are subjected to war's horrors and cruelties. We grieve for the elderly who must deal with inhumane treatment and days filled with lack, lack of resources, lack of sufficient food and clean water and appropriate shelter.
We grieve for families who must bear the burden of security and safety amid violence and bloodshed. Your word reminds us, dear God, that you are a God of peace, transcendent and transforming. As we focus on the nearly 60 ongoing military conflicts around the world, we place them in your hands. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline your ear to us and grant us your peace. We ask this humbly in the name of Jesus, who is our Christ. Amen.